Welcome to another mini tutorial from 2dgameartguru.com. Today I'm working in Affinity Designer to create some colorful letters of the alphabet. I set myself some limitations for this one. I'm going to use text, circles, rectangles and teardrop shapes and I'm going to limit it to five colors per design plus the background. I already did the letters A, B and C. In the layout panel you can see a lot of ellipses, rectangles and teardrop shapes. I used the letters as a clipping mask. That way I can continue the pattern inside the letters. Let's start with the next letter. As the font for this example, I used the Roboto slab from Google's font collection. It's a clean, straightforward font with straight lines, which lends itself to the idea of just using basic shapes for decoration. The font comes in different weights. I prefer the regular. I use the text tool to change the A to a D. I start with my background color. I color the artboard, give it a light blue fill. Let's go a little darker. And then I have five circles on the side. They are just my markers to see the colors. I want to work with global colors. So I change to the swatch panel and say add global color. You can pick a color using the color picker tool. Just don't do as I did here. You have to pick a color and then click on the color again to change it from the black to that color, which I did not do. I did it in the color wheel now. You can add your global colors by either picking them with the color picker or use the color wheel, the sliders, whatever input is most comfortable for you. I create my five global colors using the HSL color wheel. The reason for working with global colors when I have a set number of colors is the ease in which I can change things. I can quickly show you by just duplicating a circle. I take the circle, duplicate it a few times and then go in and change the color in my swatches panel. If you lose it, look for the document colors. Now I can just change the color and all dots with the yellow color will be altered. I delete the unwanted notes and keep just two. One will be the head of my duck. The other one will serve as the body. I add a teardrop shape for the wing and the tail feathers. In this video you might notice that I duplicate a lot. Ctrl J is my best friend. It's a lot easier to duplicate a shape that's already on the screen and usually in the proximity of where I need it than creating new shapes using shortcuts or the toolbar. Whenever I change colors, I make sure I use the swatch panel rather than the color picker. The color picker will pick up the CMYK or RGB value depending on what kind of document you have. It won't use the global color. The new style picker tool in version 2 on the other hand picks up the global colors. I'm not quite happy with the pointy beak that the teardrop shape creates. I'm going to replace that with a rounded rectangle, set the corners to 50% to get a elongated pill shape, which looks a little bit more like a duck's beak. 
With the design of the duck done, I group it, scale it down a little bit and it's time to add some decoration. I use circles for some lily pads. Add a square for a bit of a cutout. In hindsight, I should have just gone with the pie shape. Here I'm sticking with my shapes, so I'm still just using circles and rectangles. I set the rectangle to erase and group it with my circle. That way the rectangle cuts out of the circle and I have my stylized lily pad. In order to keep the letter nice and readable, I add a stroke to the letter. I give it the same color as the background and make sure the stroke is set to be behind the fill. Next up I add a few circles with a stroke but no fill. I set them to white, again making sure I pick the white stroke color from the swatches panel. Make sure the stroke is not scaling with objects as I want to use it in different locations in different sizes. Again, it's a matter of duplicating and positioning. I copy two circles, select the letter and paste them inside with Ctrl Alt V or the Edit Paste Inside. That way the letter becomes the clipping mask for the content. I can now easily add more shapes inside my letter to make it look a bit more interesting. Finally, I'm going to add some flowers. I use the teardrop shape, flip it and then rotate the two. Do the same thing with a yellow. This way I can easily create a simplified water lily. I group the flower, duplicate it, rotate it so it looks a little bit different in scaling and rotation and use it in two other spots. Finally, I'm going to add a few circles just to fill up some of the gaps in the design. Using a duplicate of the beak and a darker shape of the wings, the duck gets some much needed feet. Now that the design is done, it's time for some color adjustments. The green feels a little too dark, so I double click on the green, set my color wheel and choose a slightly lighter green, a lighter yellow and a matching lighter orange and a lighter background as well. And that's the final design. Created with a letter, circles, rectangles and teardrops. They are all basic shapes and there were no drawing, pen or pencil tool skills required. 
The other letters were created the same way with the addition of the white line in the astronaut and the legs of the bees as well as the mouth of the crocodile. As you can see, it does not require complex shapes to create interesting illustrations. If you enjoyed this video and learned something new, please subscribe to my channel, click on the notification icon, leave a like and a comment in the section below and let me know what you want to see on my blog or on this channel and I will see you again soon.